Hey guys, let's take a look at a really interesting lock that uh, JD Jojo da Jim sent me quite a while ago, and I've been kind of messing with it off and on for a while, and it is the Rota lock. And just to give you an idea of just how huge this thing is, I put a standard master number three up here next to it, and it's just a fraction of the size. This thing probably weighs a, probably a kilo and a half, maybe. It's just horrendously heavy. Also, by comparison, we've got an American Lock Series 700. I mean, I always thought these were tremendously large locks. But when you compare them, this Rota Lock is just as big around as the 700, except it's about three or three and a half of them deep. So while this might be a huge lock uh, by our normal standards, this Rota Lock is really, really tremendously large. Well... <clears throat> I think the reason that this was created, just looking at it on the internet, is uh, uh, they were having trouble with these being twisted off of containers. So this is semi-shielded, as you see here, but by the time you put it on a container, unlike this American lock, where there would be plenty of room to stick a bar through and then literally twist the lock and break the hasp of, the, uh, of whatever it is you're locking. Not the shackle, but the hasp. You could twist it off. This one kind of prevents you from doing that. Uh, very, very heavy steel, so by the time you get something through there, there's not a lot of room to fit anything through to do that leveraging thing. Well, then the next choice, of course, is if this is on something, maybe put a wrench on it, and then you can twist it like a pipe wrench and, and twist this thing off, break either your shackle or the hasp on, on the container. On the Rotolock, you can't do that either. If you put this on there and you clamp on a pipe wrench, for example, it's got ball bearings inside of the body and it just rotates very very smoothly you can turn this all day and you're not putting a bit of attention on the hasp or the shackle so you're not going to get in that way another thing that makes this thing particularly difficult is that you have a recessed keyway here so by the time you add this portion of the recessed part and then you can see inside of there's the actual lock and I'll show you one like it in a moment you're probably adding at least a half an inch, if not three quarters of an inch, to your picking depth. So you need a very deep pick to get in there to reach the back of the pins, whether it's six, six pin or five pin. Now, inside of this is a, um, a 30 millimeter GG. And before we talk about GGs, this lock can be fitted with any 30 millimeter uh, uh, standard half euro cylinder. And this one happens to be a multi-lock. So my plan is, if I can get this GG out, uh, take it apart, maybe we can put this uh, multi-lock in there, make it even more of a challenge to get into. This, by the way, is a, a seven pinner. Okay, so GG lock. Well, they're nasty. They were designed by the devil. I think we all know that. Let me fix my shades here just a little bit. We got it's unusual that the sun is coming out lately. Seems like we've had an awful lot of rain here. There we go. Okay, Gigi. Well, this one, you can't quite make it out now, but this one's been picked on for a long, long time. we got a lot of wear on that cylinder, so if we can get it picked, might not be a bad idea to replace it with something new. This is the key. Again, I said designed by the devil, and I think Jim probably picked this key out especially for me. He said he did manage to pick it, and I have picked it off camera a couple of times. Okay, it only is going to rotate one quarter turn, and then we're going to get an unlock. And then rotate it back and locked. Let's see if I can get the key out. There we go. So we're still locked up. So that's what we're looking at here. The other thing about the GG, and this is what took me so long, a little bit hard to make out in this photograph, maybe when we get the core out, it's quite restricted on the bottom. Now, if you take a normal pick, for example, one like this standard hook, and if you slide it along the top of the warding, well, basically, you've overset the first pin or two or even three. So you might set the back pins, but the front ones are going to be overset. You're never going to get in. If you try to use a standard width pick and go in from the bottom, the warding will not give you access to those pins. So my next idea was to take a standard, um, uh, this one's not standard, that was bent, but uh, something like this, 15 thousandths, and then get it in there. And 15 thousandths is just enough, you can tell by how bent this one is, and how bent that other one was, you're going to end up trying to set some of the warding. Not going to work too well for you. Didn't work for me. So I had to get something narrower than 15 thousandths. And what I came up with, let me put this down, 
is I'm just going to use a standard, it's a Peterson gem. This one's been got a few miles on it. And I had to take it and sand it to narrow the width down to about 12 thousandth of an inch. And it took me about 30 minutes to wear this down. And then I kind of rounded off all the sharp edges. And this is barely enough for me to pick from the bottom and work my way up around that warding and get access to the pins in the back without the pick getting stuck in this nasty, nasty GG lock. So that's enough talk. All I've got to do now is figure out how to mount this thing up in the vise and uh, let's see if we can't get it picked and gutted. Alright, this will be my second attempt. I, I did get it picked on the first try, but it took 18 minutes. A little bit too long, so I'm just going to take a shot and see if we can get it, uh, get it a little shorter. It is still locked. Alright, let's see if we can get access to those rear pins, which seem to be the nightmare of this lock. Okay, I got five and six. And that's four, I believe. We got a little bit of a false set. Three, no, no. Two, and three. And let's see if we can't. Yeah, I got good feedback on one. So at least one security pin in this lock. I think I got him set. Go back and check everybody now. And there we got an open. Okay, let me try not to take anything out of the camera here. A little hard since it's so big. Get this out of the vise. Okay, got an open. Now, let's gut this thing. And see what's in it. I have taken it apart because I wanted to see what the core looked like to see if I'd be able to replace it with something as part of this video. And let's see here. The first thing we need to do is take out this set screw. And we've got an Allen wrench. And when we take this set screw out, set it aside here, and move all this stuff out of the way. Okay, then a little pin will fall out, and that is what holds the shackle in place. And this is the pin that holds the shackle. Put him right there, and then the shackle comes out. Now, inside of here are two more screws, and these are both Allen screws, and they are 532nd, which is what I happen to have right here. Get in that hole. There we go. Okay, once we've loosened both of those, then the bottom will fall off. We'll set that aside. We're going to look at that again later. And then there is our standard core. And this, uh, as I said, is a Gigi. So let's pop that out. And this is the important part. We're going to set this body right here. We're going to come back to that in a few moments. And let's go ahead and gut this. I have not gutted this one, and I have no idea what's in it. So let's just do that real quick. He says. Come on. 
There we go. I have no idea where that flew to, but it doesn't matter. We're going to put another a new core in this thing. Okay. We are going to need a medium. There's a medium. I'm going to put this up at the top so we can stop those uppers from popping out. And here we go. Set that right there. And on the bottom, we're looking at standard. 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 And a standard. And on the core itself, nothing spectacular. No counter milling, no tricky stuff, no serrations or threading on the inside of there. Uh, what I have noticed though on the, what was giving us trouble, just if you take a quick look, we were able to access the front of the pins and I don't know if you can make this out but there's some wear on the front probably from people trying to pick. So the picking the front pins has worn away part of this. So if you want to pick from the bottom you have to wedge it up in between this and as you, this is a 15,000. This is the one that is not machined. He doesn't want to go up inside of there unless you really force him. And so I don't know if this has been, especially back here with pin 5 I mean, that's, that's how hard it is to get it up through there. That's how hard 5 and 6 is. The one I machined down, or actually sanded down, just a little bit easier, and it does go in just a little smoother, but not a lot, but enough. It was enough to give us access to those back pins. So 12 thousandths or even 10 thousandths would probably be what you need to re reliably get up through the warding on this lock. Okay, enough BS and Bill. Let's find out what's inside of this thing. Okay, first one is a spool, a little baby spool. Number two is a spool. Number three is a kind of a spool, spool serrated thing. Of number four, another spool. Five is a serrated. And number six, we can get them out here is another baby spool. Okay, let me lay these down, give you a quick look. Get that out of the way, get that out of the way. Alright guys, here's what we're looking at. All standards on the bottom, and then all along the top we had, uh, looks like three spools and then two of these serrated jobbies. Make your life just a little bit more interesting. Alright, now let's get this out of the way, and let's get our lock body back. Alright, standard standard core. So we could put anything in there as long as it's no more than 30 millimeters long. And this one is a modified GG. I don't know if Jim did that himself or if that's the way he got it. But I thought we'd make it just a little bit more interesting. Um, I do have a, uh, in this pile of junk here, I do have this multi-lock core. And lo and behold it does fit in there perfectly. So if we can arrange this back together this would really be a secure and interesting lock. And instead of six pins, now we'd have to deal with seven. And of course, it's not a standard pin tumbler lock. This would be a dimple lock. So let me put this back together and we'll come back. All right, guys, we got it, uh, got everything fixed up. Now, there was every reason to replace this key because with three of the very low cuts here, this key, I don't know if you can quite make it out, but it's been bent and we got some very small cracks in it, so it was inevitable. This key was probably not going to last a whole lot longer. Probably bent like that as well. So wouldn't have lasted a lot longer. So there's every reason to get rid of it. So now we have a brand new lock, and we have not one but four brand new keys. And instead of a standard pin tumbler, now we have a pretty challenging seven pin. If I can get it in there. Seven pin dimple lock, multi lock. So the best of everything. Anyway, fellas, there you go. Thanks for your time. Everybody stay safe and uh, stay legal.